For those of you who like to complete hard solo activities, one of the most annoying things about builds oriented around that is that they primarily focus just on survivability. Survivability is very important when you're trying to solo very difficult or higher end end game content, but it often does not allow you to do high DPS. So when you're doing those activities, it takes you multiple rounds to try to finish whatever boss you're trying to do, whether that's in a higher level law sector, whether that's in a dungeon, or whether that's in a nightfall. Anything that you're trying to solo, those are the compromises you normally have to make. In this build, I'm gonna talk about something specifically to season 17, season of the haunted, where you'll be able to do both and do them well and finish any activity. And again, this is gonna be something that doesn't require someone who has a ton of skill to complete. This build will basically allow you to very easily be able to accomplish all those goals. So I would try to get those done with this build this season. First off, I'm gonna talk about the core of this build. Now, one thing I like about this build, it's very flexible. Obviously, some activities you go into, you're locked in what your loadout is. So those, you'll have to pick one or the other as you go into this build. Some of the activities, like the dungeons, for instance, allow you to vary up your loadout. And so for that, you'll be able to use some variants of this build that allow you to be flexible depending on what the objectives of the particular encounter that you're in. So the very first thing you need when you do to do this build is you need Classy Restoration, at, which is one of the high level seasonal mods for the season 17. To get this, you'll need to get to the end of your artifact to get this. Now, if you struggle with this, I do have another video where I talk about probably the most efficient way to get leveled up quickly, and that will allow you to get these mods unlocked. Classy Restoration allows you, when you use your class ability, to get two times restorations for 10 seconds. Now, that may not sound like a lot. Let me show you what that looks like in practice. So first off, you know you need to have high resilience in this season. You know that it's something that's been built into the game and it actually matters, trying to get as close to 100 as possible, depending on what your armor has. As you can see in this clip, if you look at the two sides, one side has it where I've gone through this law sector. This is a high level law sector where I'm considerably under level. One of them I am doing without classy restoration. One of them, you can see me activating it. Look at the difference in my survivability during this encounter without anything else, without anything else on your build. And again, this is the same resilience on both sides. So the resilience in this case doesn't matter. It's simply about having this ability to get restoration and get it quickly. You will be able to survive even if you're under level and you're out of cover. Because again, in those end game activities, you're usually trying to hide and things like that. But if for some reason you're out and you need to do something temporarily for that 10 seconds, this will allow you to do that very easily and to stay alive because you're constantly regenerating health. It's not that it's giving you protection. It's actually regenerating your health. It's more like well of life or something like that. So in addition, the other core of this build is something that's called Radiant that's in the season. Now, depending on what character you're playing, there's a lot of ways to get Radiant. The easiest way on the Hunter, because I'm going to be playing Gunslinger to do this, is to use your Acrobatic Dodge. Your Acrobatic Dodge, actually, I kind of prefer it to some of the other dodges because it you kind of go backwards and get you out of trouble really quickly. But the acrobatic dodge, when you do that, the dodge makes you radiant by default. No other mods, anything else required. So you can see kind of the synergy here. You're gonna become radiant and also get restoration simply by dodging. And so without adding anything else to the build, this alone is going to allow you to do a lot of things. Now the radiant is useful because it's a strong multiplier on your DPS. And if you combine it with other things you see in this video I put up here, you can get potentially up to 150% extra damage with your heavy weapons against enemies. So again, you can see without having to do a lot of other build crafting with just dodging, you can become highly resistant to damage and actually regenerate your, da your damage, but you can also gain a great deal of DPS potential, again, just from dodging. Obviously, you can continue to dodge to get those abilities back, and you can put things that will potentially make your dodge happen within the cool-off uh, period, right? You can do that. The only trick with that is, is that's going to take away from other mods you need. Now, you can do that. On this build, for instance, I, in some cases, I put things on that allow me to get my dodge quicker. You can also have your mobility higher, but depending on your armor, you may not have that. If you don't for some reason, then there are other fragments that will allow you to get these back and extend them longer. First off, I'm gonna use Ember of Solace. This allows you to get your Radiant and Restoration longer, so that's gonna be good, right? That's gonna allow you to keep these abilities longer when you get them. 
I'm also going to use the new unlocked Ember of Empyrean, which your solar abilities and final blows extend the duration. So what do I mean by this? This basically means if you're using any of your abilities, so if you're on your hunter, you use your throwing knife, use your grenade, things like that, even your super, you can extend those. However, the other thing you could do is just using a solar weapon. A couple things that be good here is Jotun and Sunshot. You'll see in this example here that by just going in and using my Jotun and against a bunch of smaller adds, I can easily extend this because each time you kill an enemy, you're getting, I think it's around three to four seconds of your Radiant and your Restoration extended. So what that means is just by using solar abilities or your weapons, and again, you don't have to use an exotic, you can use whatever. These just are things that are going to allow you to get it quickly. You can basically max out and keep the Radiant and the Restoration going forever. Now, obviously, with these being energy weapons, there is ammo economy to keep in mind, but you can do this with other weapons. So these are just examples. You can kind of customize your build to what you want to do because... Again, you may be in a lost sector that requires barrier or overload. You may be in a nightfall that requires that, right? So you may have to change a little bit what the weapons you're using, but you can see the bones of what makes this build pretty powerful and allows you to basically stay alive as long as possible, but also do some incredible damage. So now let's talk about some variants of the build depending what encounter you're on. So let's say for instance, that you're at an encounter that is primarily about boss DPS. If you're an encounter like that, then you're going to want to use Star Eater Scales with Siphon Mods. Now, the Siphon Mods allow you, whether you're using Harmonic, which is basically to match the weapon to the burn of whatever abilities you're using, or Kinetic, which basically allows you to do multi-kills with Kinetic weapons to generate orbs. You want to do this if you're in solo content as much as possible, because when you get eight of those, you get an incredible multiplier for your Blade Barrage. And your Blade Barrage, in this case, is an incredible DPS super. It hasn't been in the past, but it is now. To do that, you want to use Knock Them Down, which gives you more blades, and then I also use Ember Beams, which makes them have better target acquisition. That way they're not fanning out and hitting ads and other things. They're hitting the boss that you're trying to kill in this encounter. Again, this is literally the best DPS super in the game right now. So if you're trying to do DPS specifically, if that's your focus, what I would do is use a Kinetic Primary. I use uh, Chroma Rush in this case. And also, I use Jotun, and I use Cataclysm with Bait and Switch. The Kinetic will allow you to, to basically make orbs as quickly as possible on red bars. The other thing I do with this is that I use High Energy Fire, and I use Taking Charge, because then what I'm doing is I'm basically getting orbs which are allowing me to power up my starter scales, but I'm also getting Charges of Light, which are going to allow me to use Taken Fire, which stacks with everything, which stacks with the Radiant. Again, in that other video, I kind of go through the math of how that works. The Jotun is going to allow you to extend your Radiant and your Restoration for protection and for, again, for damage with Radiant. And if you hit a shot with each on a boss, and Jotun, for instance, will do burn damage over time, but if you do, you do your Auto Rifle, you do your Jotun, and then you do your Cataclysm, which has Bait and Switch, then you do an incredible amount of DPS. And again, it's going to allow you as a solo player, because you're not going to have other players with you, to easily take down those bosses in the middle of dungeons or in other activities. As far as the rest of the build, because I could go into all the details on everything in the build, what I'd primarily do is I would focus on putting in mods that allow you to max out your mobility and resilience so you can stay alive, but also get your dodge back to be able to do your, your acrobatic dodge and get Radiant Restoration back. And then whatever mods you're going to need to do like the champions or things like that. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're struggling with mobility, you can also use Powerful Friends. I know it's been nerfed a little bit, but if you use Powerful Friends, and specifically an arc chess piece, then you can use the Armor of the Dying Star, which is a seasonal mod that gives you both void and solar protection, and then partner that with an arc mod, an arc mod protection, which would then also allow you to do Powerful Friends. And that will allow you to kind of take your mobility and round that out if you need to on your particular build. Again, it depends on the armor that you have. One other variant you can use is if you're in an encounter that doesn't have a boss, for instance, but you're dealing with a lot of ads, I would switch up the Shards of Galanor. That allows you to get 50% of your super back really quickly when you're running shards. And with the other ad clearing ability in this build, plus getting orbs, you're going to get your super really quickly. So again, start your scales if you're doing primarily DPS. I would use shards if you're going to be focused more on killing ads and get your super back quicker. Either one is fine, but you can tailor that again to the activity that you're in currently. The last variant of this build I'll talk about is when we talk about nightmare-based encounters. You'll see those, especially in Duality Dungeon. 
If you use those, there's another mod that you can use that will help out, but you'll have to vary your build up a little bit. In this case, I'm using Wither Horde. Wither Horde, since it's a kinetic weapon, if you use that with the kinetic siphon, it's gonna allow you to generate a ton of orbs. The reason I do that is because instead of using Jotun, I'll use a Glaive, and then I use Cataclysm as well. The reason that I'm using the Glaive is there's a Glaive mod called Glaive of Dreams. What this does is, and again, it's a seasonal mod, what this mod does is it doubles the duration of the unstable essence. You get unstable essence when you kill a nightmare within an encounter. There are a ton of those. So for instance, in the first encounter where you're trying to finish in the duality dungeon, you know the area where you have to go into rooms, you have to kill all of those nightmares. Each one of them drops an unstable essence. Well, what that does is that allows you then to do extra damage against nightmares. So that's a great mod. And again, you even have some nightmares in some of the lost sectors. So again, what that allows you to do is extend the duration of that, which allow you to do extra DPS. You add that to all the other things, all the stacking abilities, and you'll see you'll be able to easily take out bosses, majors, and things that you have in these encounters. So Season of the Solar has been really great, right? Season of the Haunted, Season of the Solar. It's got a ton of great seasonal mods. There's a ton of abilities, but you see all the synergy you have here that will allow you to stay alive and do the extra damage that you need to do. Some of these are based on seasonal mods, so I would try to get this build in place and do some of these activities before they go away. Obviously, next season will have some great mods as well, but the synergy between these, because solar, you're not usually used to solar being something, at least on a hunter, where your survivability. Obviously, on the warlock, it can't be. But on a hunter, you're not used to that. But by being able to do that, plus the best DPS supers in the game, honestly, it's a no-brainer. Get this build, get in, get the achievements you're trying to get done this season before the season goes away. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, join my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.